19th select board meeting agenda I'll call this meeting to order and we have a consent <laughs> agenda this evening we have AP minutes warrants rather 1909 AP 1909 S AP 1859 PR 1911 AP 1910 and AP 1911 we have one day liquor licenses for the Mullen Center. Uh, one license for each space and date. So there are uh, January 4th, January 11th, January 12th, January 18th, February 8th, February 15th, February 21st, and March 2nd, 2019. We have a one day liquor site. Uh, license for Basketball Champion Center Court Club Donors and the reception is 102418. We have uh, one day liquor licenses for football games McGurk Stadium on 106, 1020, 103. I'll be there on 1020. Uh, and uh, NBC Claire, uh, we have a NBC Claire Carlson. That's the consent agenda. Appointment to the municipal building committee. Municipal building committee. I also had a request from um, Mike Sarginski's wife, um, Adrian. Adrian. She also wanted to have be on the. Uh, she mentioned it at last Monday's meeting of the building committee meeting of being on the municipal building committee. She is an industrial arts uh, architect. Mm -hmm. Um, so she also has experience too. So um, th that had to be formally put in, didn't it? Yeah, she can just send an email. Though. Send an email in. Mm -hmm. oh. Okay. So that's the consent agenda. Motion to approve. Second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Is Mr. Waskevitz joining us this evening? He said he was going to. Okay. Do you want to give him a little text? Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Oh, here he is. Oh, Thanks. here he is. Don't need to text Ladies him. Ladies and gentlemen, all the way to the <laughs> <as usual. laughs> Flying by the seat of his pants. Welcome. We're not dealing. Okay. We now have a public comments from 7 to 7.15. We're a little bit late, but we have until 7.15. Is there anybody here um, that has anything for public comments? How about those Red Sox? <laughs> <laughs> Did they win today? Uh, they're playing now. I think. Oh, they're playing now. Okay. I knew they were playing tonight. Got to win tonight to win the, clinch the division. Marlon, did you have something that you want to do? Yeah, I got something real quick. Um, okay. As you all know, this is my last select like, board meeting with the town of Hadley. Uh, I just wanted to take a minute. Um, I kind of passed on this when my resignation was read, but I figured I would save it for this meeting. Um, I just wanted to say that there's a, there's a lot of tools in the toolbox in the DPW now. Um, there's many things that have accomplished uh, for the next DPW director to carry the, to carry the ball, um, do some repairs on infrastructure, some upgrade, um, the whole GIS. We, we've got many things in place that weren't here when I got here. Um, <clears throat> but it's not about me. It's about having support from the select board, all the committees, uh, all the boards, and, and of course the taxpayers on, on town and floor. And um, I just wanted to say thank you. That <clears throat> that, that makes my job easier. A lot easier. Um, and I wanted to say thank you to everyone for the support I've had here. Thank I you. don't. I don't think we can say enough thank yous um, to everything that you've done for us over the last couple of years. We really appreciate um, how you took the bull by the horns and uh, made the DPW what it is today. It was not a difficult path to follow, um, but I feel like you've had certainly put great things in place and. I can just see a better future for us at the DPW, and I do appreciate everything that you've done. I've had some great conversations with you. Thank you. We've had a lot of conversations with you. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, we just wish you luck for your new endeavors, and, you know, enjoy your family, enjoy your scouting. Uh, you have so many other irons in the fire that uh, 
to me, family life is more important than your job, and if that's what it takes to make you happy, then that's what you do. Well, my, my private contact information is being floated around. There's a lot of family here now, too, so. Um, that's good. I just wanted to say that. Thank, thank you very much. You're welcome here anytime. Yeah. Call us. <laughs> and good luck. I know where I can find you on Wednesday nights. Good luck on that. <laughs> with the new DPW director search as well. Yes, we'll be yeah. here. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, anybody here? Is, are you here for anything specific? My name is Megan Campbell. I'm here for the Library Trustees. Library Trustees. Okay, thank you. Okay, I guess we can, um, well, we've still got a few minutes because the hearing is at 7.15. How would you like to go into the tree warden duties? You want to get that done, Mike? Uh, sure. Um, well, as you all know, I'm, I'm the tree warden and the departing, as we just talked about. Um, at least in the interim, we're going to need somebody to be tree warden. Um, under Mass General Law, committees under 10,000 don't have to be a certified arborist um, or meet the other qualifications, um, required licenses. Um, Billy and I have been, Bill Kelly and I have been working on trees for the last year. Uh, he's, he's done a good job out there of uh, pointing things out to me. I go out and make the call on them, whatnot. Um, but I think in, in the interim, as, as Sharon and Billy are co-directors, I think it, it would be uh, a good thing to, to have Billy be the, the interim uh, tree warden. Um, you're going to need somebody there to make the call in the storm, uh, to take a tree down, you know, emergency situations mainly. As you know, we're here tonight for a, a tree hearing. Uh, I think we've done a pretty good job. I mean, there's a lot of trees out there that need work, but I think we've got the dangerous ones we know about on, on the list tonight. So it'll give him a good starting point. And again, he can, somebody will have him to make the call in an emergency situation. And, and I recommend Bill Kelly be uh, appointed interim. Do we need a motion or are you just going to do that before you leave? Uh, I can either deputize or the board can appoint. I mean, you're still in charge. Until next Tuesday. It doesn't <laughs> matter. We can take a vote now. Yeah, I'll make a motion to appoint Bill. Okay, I second that. Okay. First and second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Well, we can do a, let's go uh, move through this. We have, uh, the Turkey Park is off the agenda tonight. Um, we don't have anything for them this evening. One day liquor license um, fee discussion. Uh, we had a, for nonprofit or for profit organizations, um, David felt that we were out of uh, range on our uh, fee that we charge. Too high or too low? Too high. Um, <clears throat> so we set it at uh, $300 by Mass General Law. For profit organizations can get one day liquor licenses for malt and wine only, not all alcoholic drinks. So we set it too high, um, and market conditions indicate that it should be in the $100 range rather than $300. We've had a number of for profit organizations come to us and inquire about one day liquor licenses and when they see the fee and then they see the surrounding towns they always go to the, sur the surrounding towns so we're missing out on a revenue opportunity here so so who are the for-profit organizations that typically approach us what kind of organization uh, banks have approached us a couple of times um, we've had a couple of like chamber of commerce events that yeah, we've had a, yeah. Um, they're not profit though the chamber Oh, so even when, when a even business when does it, it's through the chamber, so it's not worth <coughs> it? Oh. But we have had a lot of restaurants calling. Um, uh, there was a art studio that was opening up, and they expressed lots of displeasure about how high it was, because they weren't interested in going for a full license. So there's been a multitude of businesses, um, that, and nobody takes it. So. Do you know offhand how many for-profit one-day liquor licenses we did last year? Offhand? So to be clear, last year we had, I don't know if y'all remember Y in Canvas, mm -hmm. and she was operating with one-day liquor licenses, so last year would not be a typical year. Last year I think there was about 17 of them, because okay. she had opened a business and was trying to do business that way, um, and then she ended up taking a liquor license one of our wine and malts because it was too expensive to continue on. But before that, and I was only here for a part of the year, I would say maybe four or five. 
entertain I can make a motion that we reduce the one day liquor license fee from three hundred dollars to one hundred dollars. Second. Second. Any further discussion? I will split the difference. Want to do one fifty? I would say lower two hundred and see how that affects the market <coughs> demand for what do you have a list of the other towns around us? What if <coughs> Northampton <coughs> does sixty dollars. The Admiral does fifty uh, hundred dollars. Uh, Northampton is sixty for nonprofits and one hundred two for profits. Okay. Sorry, I just laid it out. All right, you. thank you. It's over here, though. But yes, that's Read it. the wrong list. So one hundred seems to be the going rate. Yeah, I would say keep it at one hundred if we. And then too we can many, adjust to whatever better. going on to around this also. Can we? Uh, we can note, David, to revisit this um, yearly. Yearly, because mm -hmm. uh, you see a large increase in the one-day liquor licenses, and then we just want it back up. Okay. So, uh, give up. Yeah. Okay. All in favor of the $100 uh, fee? Aye. 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 Thank you. Aye. Unanimous. Um, one-day liquor license for Greenfield Savings Bank. How come that didn't go on the consent agenda? Because you're you need to have that to the discussion about the oh, I see. Oh, all right, gotcha. Can I take a quick administrative break? Certainly. Jennifer, can I have you to just, for some reason I can't get an internet connection tonight. Do you mind just double checking my sign -ins? Yes. And if not, David's a friendly sir. I can look on with him. Here's a, here's a hard copy of the agenda. You're done? Okay. So, uh, Greenfield Savings Bank has asked for a one-day liquor license on September 26th for light beer and wine refreshments from 4 to 6 p.m. Uh, at their opening this week. Yep. Motion? Motion to approve. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. <coughs> Says only light beer, though. Light beer. I know. That's okay. You're right about localities. <laughs> 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 I guess, you I guess they're, not, yeah. Uh, yeah. they're not brewed, are they? We got invited. We got invited. I do not see Kessel here yet. <coughs> and we have 7.15. Let's go up to that and get it done. Close enough. Tree hearing. And we have a tree hearing. Marlo, do you want to take over on that? Sure. Uh, this this particular hearing covers uh, a total of 16 trees. Uh, for the most part, a good majority of them are uh, sugar maples. We have a, a couple of Norways, a silver maple, and a beech. Um, basically, um, one tree on Bay Road, uh, four on Middle, and, and the remaining on West Street. A lot of trees on West Street. Would they yeah. get the yeah. jackpot this year? Um, well, a, a lot of these trees have been trimmed multiple times, and in the last time they were trimmed, they took what they call the crown out of them, the center in the middle. Everything else is dying off, or they're in a position where the crown needs to be cut out and they're going to die. Um, some of these trees have been trimmed to the point where there's no more to trim. Um, some of them have one limb, limb left on them that have actually a few leaves. Uh, they're split. A lot of them are showing uh, insect decay and rot. Um, there's four or five of them that sit up over sidewalks that are constantly losing limbs. Um, so I evaluated all these trees and I, I deem that uh, they certainly should come, come down. Any of the trees between West Street and Middle Street are on the sidewalk where it's going to interrupt the sidewalk with the uh, stumps being left there at all? I think there's one real close to the sidewalk out of all these, you know, right up against it. Um, again, um, Bill Kelly, we put a uh, stump list together. We, we did purchase a stump grinder for our machine. So um, in that <clears throat> lull between fall and, and snow flies, we're going to be out there and we're start grinding town, town stumps. Okay. So that's something he'll be putting together. It's on his uh, list. Okay. Is there anything we can do to be more proactive with those trees? like? You know, I mean, I have some really big trees in my yard, and I've talked to a couple of tree people because 
he said that with climate change and that kind of thing, if you believe in it or not, um, <laughs> you know, there's a lot of uh, trees like this dying. Is there anything we can do to try to save these guys? Because we don't know if they'll ever get trees as big again. They're probably right. old. They're old, but I think also there's other factors that are contributing to them dying. And, Since you know, I've been here, I'll be honest with you, the sugar maples, <laughs> this is the largest amount of sugar maples I've had to deal with. Predominantly, it's been Norway maples. Um, usually, every tree listening to a tree hearing has quite a few Norway maples on it. As we know, mm -hmm. Norway maple was introduced to this country, and it wasn't the right tree to be introduced. Um, so, I think going forward, um, the the um, shade tree uh, committee could be a big help. Um, they could help uh, on, on a tree planting. Um, we can get grants. Uh, we have to meet three times a year. It's been kind of difficult the last year to meet, get everybody to get a quorum. Um, but I think uh, there's a few people on that committee that show interest of you know, doing the meetings. Um, we can get all our trees gis if you want to go that far with it. Um, and we can also get um, free grants for replacement trees. Uh, the nursery has kind of outgrown itself. Uh, they were planted real close together. Uh, and that's some of the trees that we're having to cut down because when they actually pull them, they've actually grown together and they don't make it when they're replanted. So, so that was kind of my question. Uh, hopefully we can kind of rebuild the tree belt, at least on Mill Street and West, West Street, because there's a lot of holes in the tree belt. So yeah. it, it'd be great if we could get the shade tree community to start working on that. The other yeah. thing, too, is these trees are you know, upwards of 70, 80, 100 years old. And and they, they were planted plenty far apart when they were planted, but the, the other part of it is they're, they're intermingled now. They're so big that uh, they're, they're starting with each other. Mm -hmm. um, so. The Shade Tree Committee, I'm not in so just a person off of it, so is there a quorum? Right. Um, there is a quorum, um, but I believe we're, we're short two members. So how many members are on this street? Yes. Right, because Terry resigned, right? Correct. Yes. And I, excuse me, I forget her name, but she moved out of the area too. So, but we do have three left, I believe. Lori Martin. Yeah. Mr. Edwards. No, Mr. Edwards is one, John mm -hmm. Edwards. Mm -hmm. But we could, we could use some help. Um, you know, that's pretty easy work to do. Just have three meetings a year, and you can qualify for the whole Tree City USA. And there's grants available. Or, to put a tree plant in, I mean, that was part of my goals and objectives this coming year, or would be, uh, to get that more active and, and come up with a tree planting plan for the town. Uh, so, a little hint for the, for the next person. Okay. Motion to approve the list. Second. Second. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Before we move on, I have a question on the tree that's tagged. Sure. I live on Mount Warner, and you didn't mention one that's tagged on Mount Warner, the Winches property. Oh, yes. Is that the one with the playhouse or something? Right. It, right I, against the I abut the Winches property, okay, to the east. But first of all, they couldn't make it here today. I'm Leo Petro, by the way. Okay. I live at 151 Mount Warner. Um, they couldn't make it, but should the committee decide to cut down the tree, or has it already been determined? Are you cutting down that tree that's no. been tagged? It's not that on this list. What's been no, voted it's, on? It's not on this list. Um, well, do you want, to sh you want me to show you this? Yes, the I, I will tell you that I put it on the list, but I mean, I put it on the list to be cut, and it didn't make it on this list. So um, what does that mean? I'm here for nothing? Uh, are, are you wanting it? Are you wanting it cut down? Yeah, well, the part of it, I thought it was already right. going. That's why you tagged it, it and correct. it was just a process of, right. you know, it, it presenting it to the committee. So it's not, is that what you're telling me? It's not going to be cut down? Because it's leaning more towards yes. my right. Let me living room than right. his. I'm telling you, it didn't make the list, <laughs> but that tree is in an emergency way that I am going to take that tree down. I was about to brought that tree up. I inspected this tree. There's a, there's a lot of uh, insect. There's a lot of rot. It's all been cut on one side. It was a very large, um, wide tree. One of the wise was taken off. And somebody might have made a nice playhouse on the, the one stump part of it. But it's a very large tree. One of the, the other leader, the other half of the Y, goes up over, I believe, yeah, and my house towards his house. <laughs> um, and it's starting to show a split where the, where the Y is. So do you need us to amend? 
this with that tree? Um, or, or is he just considering an emergency and you're taking it down? Um, if we could amend it, that would be better. Um, are there any that aren't on the list? Not that I'm aware of. I took four off on the tree cutting list because I think we can trim them and not take them down again. Motion to amend to include the, the tree on 151 Mount Warner, 153. Yeah, what, what am, I don't know his number. Between but it also goes over my cable wires, and I would hate to meet the Mr. Red Sox or the Patriots. Oh, yeah. God, no. <laughs> Since you brought it up. Well, that's an emergency. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. But if I, if I can ask another question, because the winches couldn't make it here, if you do cut down the tree, he's asked me, can he take the wood to save the town? Yes. Money? That's his. So if, is that possible? Yeah, can I reach? And you have the wood? It goes to the homeowner first and then, oh, okay, and great. then the abutter. Great. My right. next question is, there's a maple tree 30 feet from that tree that's tagged, and I have pictures. It goes over, it's about to go over my front porch. It's very close to going, it's already over the road, but maybe 10 feet from going over the power lines. Okay, and part of that tree goes over, it crosses the other side of my cable. I have pictures to show you if you want to see is it the tree. Or is it, what kind All right, of is the maple right next to it? Yeah, okay. So if, if you could trim a lot of those very long limbs that are about to obstruct not only the power line, but my house and my cable wire, I would like to have that considered. Then that's a town tree? That's a town tree. If it's over a power line, it's over the power line. Well, well not, not over, it's very close, and I have pictures if you want to see it. Okay, it's already crossed the center line. Here. It may be on the trimming list. I don't have the trimming list with me. Right. Like, there's a couple on Mount Warner Road that, Road that are on the trimming list, that I don't have that list with me. So. This is the uh, picture going over, see going over the center line, and oh, it's not very close. Right, well, I thought it was over the line, but it's very close to the power line. But it's also, you know, all we pretty, need is a snow for um, well, Halloween. You're yeah, all set. Um, <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> like it happened a couple of years but ago. Would that would that be possible if you're taking down that tree to trim the maple? Yeah, I. I, I it seems to me there's there's one right near that tree on my trimming list that I don't oh, have with me tonight. Great. So are that's, there to that's me. List? Yeah, I'll probably take a look at it. Yeah. <laughs> Thank um, you. And, and John, to answer your question, Eversource has, has done the town uh, wonders the last two years I've been aboard. Oh, I, I, I think oh, so, especially, especially on Mount Warner. I they did a great job, but that's, that's further away than wires. So they would have never trimmed that anyway. Yeah. So, okay. Barbara? I have a question. What qualifies as a town tree? Um, we have an issue here on East Chadley Road. There was a tree I called last year because it was so badly infested. It's 15 feet in from the edge of the road, and it's in line with all the trees, and it was badly infested. And I said, you know, this is bad. And they said, no, that's private property, and they left. Well, this summer we had one of those big storms. The wind blew it down, and I called and said, uh, gee, and Mr. Kelly came up and said, that's private property. It's not ours. It's now across part of where Lebanon Road is. It was in that corner of our lot. But I don't know whether that's classified a town tree or because when we first moved into Hadley, um, I'd say about 17 years ago, town came, there was a tree near our driveway. They came, cut it down, ground the stump, and planted a new tree. I said, well, these must be all town trees. Well, this is one of the other trees. And now it's private property. So how is that determined? Well, there's private property, or is it? The I town guess you street? would have. To, I think you would have to know where your town, where your property line is. Um, usually, what is it from the roadway? <laughs> through the bounds. I mean, and, and that's what we ran into. We've had to figure out. We've had to go through Dan on a lot of these uh, streets because the bounds are the bounds aren't there anymore. Mm -hmm. The property tends. Um, in, in every road I've come across records where 25 feet from center, 15 feet from center, it varies on every road. There's no consistency here. He's had a um, narrow. And, and it's a narrow road. It may be a narrow easement for us. Um, I, I do remember Billy, Billy talking to me about the tree and he said it was behind the bounds. Um, but I'll be more than happy to take a look. It's, it's all, I've got a picture. It's, it fell over because it was so infested with the, uh, with the, uh, Carpenter, right. and then the, those vines that grow on. Well, in the summer they 
those vines that grow on it. Some of them go, but it's green. It's not the tree. And um, but it did go down. Thankfully, it didn't go on into the road. But it went to the side. And I mean, it's, I don't know how you're going to. I don't even think you could take and um, grind it because it just still rotted. I'll show you the picture. Here. That, that may be something that Marlowe's replacement or uh, the interim can work out and bring to the board as maybe a better broad definition that covers the right it's behind the high. Yeah, we can pre present to the town and say this well, is the right. mm -hmm. right. right. document well, right. yeah, I mean the street, yeah. I do remember the street. He's claiming the street. Well we be notified when the tree that's tag is being taken down or would they just come randomly and take it down? They just come randomly and take it down. Well do I have a yes on the tree in question being trimmed? He said he would do that. Oh, okay, all right. Yeah. Before I leave, I just wanted to yes. make sure. And yes. Okay, great. Yes. Thank you. All right. Thank you. All right. Have a good night. Thank you. Until Dave will be over the bonfire tonight. It's all cut down. Mr. Tetra. Tell them we'll be over for a bonfire with that wood. <laughs> Only if the fire department doesn't come by and tell us that we got to. How's that? How's that? He's here tonight. Okay. <laughs> I mean, it's just, I didn't know what Paul um, it. Happy retirement. No, I'm not retired. Oh, okay. well, enjoy, 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 well, thank you. <laughs> enjoy the family then. All right. Thank okay. you. Yeah. And more than likely, Bill will reach out to you and at least give you an idea when that tree's coming down. We normally do. Well, it's. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Thank you. Okay. Is that it? Yes. That's okay. it. Thank you. You want to go home? You got to stay. <laughs> Just <run> away. <laughs> All right. So we have a quick 7:30 meeting with the uh, select board of Goodwin and Library Trustees. Do we have them here yet? We have two of them. Two? Are we waiting for one more? Joanne's usually here. Yeah, I think we need one more for four. Four, we do. Yeah. Do you. I just texted. Okay. Do you want us to move forward then until we until your next person comes along? Would that be okay? No, yeah, you're gonna, you're, you're, gonna, you're gonna have to. You need to have a quorum. Okay, so let's 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 have Miss uh, uh, Chief. Think and able. You can be done in three minutes. <laughs> There's a good man. There's a good man for you. <laughs> All right. All right, Chief, you're on. Okay. Well, thank you. And again, um, it's all in writing for you. I, I did my uh, self evaluation. I actually was still utilizing the goals and objectives that I had in place from. I know we didn't formally put anything in, but I've had goals and objectives since I started in 2013. So I was at work completely or move forward. Basically, those were my goals and objectives anyways. But first off, just thank you to the board, Joyce, Molly, everybody. Um, the FY18 was an enormous year for the fire department, for public safety, and it's because of all of you really later. Do you want me to hold on? Okay. All right, so we will go right now since we have a quorum for the library trustees. Uh, we have an appointee this evening. Is Megan here this evening? Or are we waiting? Megan's here. Great. So that's three. <coughs> Good. At, if you have a recommendation for the select board, yes, we have a recommendation for the select board to appoint Megan Campbell, who's sitting next to me, as the uh, library trustee to replace uh, the uh, unexpired term for Kevin Berg, who resigned in August. And I believe she would be the term would run until uh, the spring, mm -hmm. and she would stand for election. 
I'll make a motion to approve the appointment of uh, Megan Campbell to the uh, Goodman Memorial Library Trustee. Thank you. You have quite a resume, Megan. Thank you for applying. We appreciate our volunteers and people that come out, so thank you. Um, any further discussion? All those in favor? I think I need a code of your roll call vote. Oh, Skippers? Yes. Bill? Yes. Keegan? Yes. Stanley? Yes. Trimble? Yes. Allen? Yes. David? Yes. Maureen? Yes. All right. Sounds good. There you have it. Thank Congrats. you very much. <laughs> Welcome to the new member. Mm -hmm. Now you can vote. <laughs> <laughs> Does she have to get sworn in? She has to get sworn in by the uh, Sorry, right. yeah. Jessica, right? Jessica. 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 Yes. All right. Now we may go back to Chief Spankenabel. You were saying. You were saying. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, so it's no secret. The uh, the biggest the, the biggest outcome for FY18 is on June 29th. We just made it in under that window there. As we uh, we started up our full time. Ambulance service uh, under action ambulance, and also we started the full time staffing at its full level uh, throughout the year, putting together job descriptions, uh, posting the jobs, interviews for a deputy chief, a lieutenant, and two firefighters was it was quite challenging, um, but I think the outcome has been very successful. Uh, the ambulance side, we all know how hard we all work. We, uh, Joyce obviously takes the crown for the, the most numbers of uh, ambulance fighting committees, but um, since I started in 2005, uh, it's always been on the radar, even when Jimmy was the chief, uh, to start reviewing and putting together a plan to implement the full-time fire department. The MRI report that came out in 2012 actually reflected all the information, <coughs> and that was kind of our basis, our foundation, along with the a study that I did as part of my uh, chief fire officer program um, where I evaluated communities of similar size and, and infrastructure and how they were operating. It's really good ideas of different how they're, they're handling their staffing. Uh, and we use that as the basis for our ambulance study committee where we then went into interviewing uh, fire chiefs, private ambulance services, and then ultimately making the recommendation to the select board to go for an RFP process. And working with David, and thank you, David, for all that as well. Uh, that was, I'm definitely educated on putting together RFPs and contracts. And uh, it was a lot of work, but I think it really, it really gave me the ability to see all the inner workings of it. So just pulling one out of a hat and throwing it on the table, it's a big difference when you go line by line and you have folks, for example, David, your, some of your, and I wrote this in here, some of your suggestions. You know, being in uh, you know your job and having been in the private ambulance service and other folks, you kind of take all that information and you try to pull together. Especially for me, because it was such a nerve-wracking thing to actually think about moving away from a service that we've had for so long and what those challenges were to making the, the you know the town comfortable with this. We've had the same thing going for 70 plus years, so to bring in an outside agency to take over your ambulance service that's been working really, really well um, and try and improve upon that. I felt it was really, really important that I, I had a really good understanding of all that and I, I do have that now. So thank you for, for all that. And um, on the flip side, the on the dispatch side, thank you to Chief Mason and his team. The, the implementation, implementation plan and the transition plan were huge. So we have dispatch to think about, all these smaller cogs that have to all be working and in place in a very, very short period of time when we decided to implement this, this contract. Uh, working with State 911 with Amherst Dispatch to ensure that when we change this stuff over that somebody was answering the phone to get an ambulance to folks. And, and so in my opinion, I think that worked quite seamlessly. And uh, even today, it's, it's been working very well. Uh, also, uh, you know, working with Mike and, and Mitch on SOPs, Standard Operating Procedures and Guidelines for the dispatcher, so there's a whole new way of dispatching now. Uh, obviously, they're still just pushing a button to transfer to 
and emergency dispatch center where they provide the information to the patient on the phone. But our dispatchers are now required to be towing off our fire apparatus and for the ambulance service. So all that information was new to them. And we had to really sit down and make sure that what we were asking them to do made sense and that they were educated on that and, and felt comfortable doing it. And again, I think it went quite well with the amount of time we had. Um, again, the other milestone for us is full-time staffing. We now have full-time day staffing from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. 365 days a year. And I can't tell you how it made me feel to actually uh, not have to wait for a fire truck to roll out of the bay to start heading to a call, uh, even on the first day when we had multiple incidents that happened at the same time. And you have all, you've all gone through this, you've all seen this, uh, you've seen what we've been struggling against. And not to say that we're, you know, we're, we're all set, everything's, you know, by the land and nothing else needs to be done. We have a long road ahead of us. We're only, you know, two and a half months into this, but I can tell you that uh, the feeling of the crews that are working, myself, the ambulance, and we were just talking about it today with action in a meeting that we had with, their direct doctor that works for them. Um, we've really, we've really kind of gelled as a unit now, where we're all working together and working together as a team. And you can see what the benefit that is on, in the service out in the field. So we've already had one save in the first month with our firefighters and, and our EMS provider provider going out and providing CPR, early CPR, and everything. Uh, having talked with the, you know, the hospital and getting the input from them on how this is working, the same thing. They're not seeing any issues. They're very happy with the paramedics that are, that are, that are on board and the EMTs. We have a very robust, robust review committee that's going through everything monthly. So there's oversight like continuously on this. And I still wake up to every page at night and hearing the ambulance getting called out, wondering is somebody gonna actually sign on and go? And within seconds has happened. Our average response time now to the home is four minutes and 36 seconds as of last month. Uh, and you've, you've had an opportunity to see some of the data on the number of calls that we're actually responding to. So the initial numbers that we thought we had, you can double that. So just so people watching at home, how, how has that improved from the average, average response time? Are we talking about minutes, are we talking 10 minutes? What, what's kind of the average so people know that Depending, depending the location of town, uh, the biggest issues were the Hockenham section. Uh, even out in this area, you were normally seeing, depending if the ambulance was coming back from the hospital or what, but five to eight minutes, sometimes 10. Uh, obviously, the calls down at, at uh, Winfield and Med Express, we're looking at a five minute response time. Uh, we're looking at about the same, maybe a little bit less from Amherst, but certainly not anything that uh, is not still above and beyond for response to those locations. I think we're looking at pretty even uh, to those locations. But, you know, a few minutes here and there is huge. For it's enormous. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's enormous. Mm -hmm. And again, like I said, this team approach where our firefighters are, they're all EMTs as well. So, for example, you know, we had eight people, including the police department. So the police are part of this team approach as well. Uh, cardiac arrest situation where we had to extricate a patient from his home and police, fire, and ambulance units were all working together to make that happen. Eight people were all sweating and breathing heavy by the end of the, by the time we got into the ambulance. So this team approach is really working, and that's what, you know, at the, at the hospitals, the American Heart Association, everybody's pushing this team approach. Everybody has a position and a clear, a clear job to do, and it's really working well. The station's getting cleaned daily. The equipment, we've had next to no issues with other than, you know, every once in a while there's a glitch where something goes down. But we haven't seen where we're trying to start up a truck and there's a dead battery because we didn't have the opportunity to fire it up for a week. Um, that's happening consistently. It's on a consistent rotation. The station has been cleaned up. Uh, excess property has been moved out the door. Uh, again, it's just continuous. So it, it's, been, it's been really, really exciting. Uh, we're doing a four on, four off schedule. So we, we're, we're not seeing much on the overtime side, first of all, because they're new employees, so they don't have the opportunity to use vacation time or anything at this point. But we're also not looking where we have, we're not going to have a minimum staffing right now. Obviously, I'm going to be there if one of the firefighters 
Paul's out sick, and then we also have our deputy. So we're looking at three people that would, would be on. Um, most likely at a minimum, unless I was unavailable or the deputy. But we will always have those two people that come along on the front. Um, we're, we're, start, we're starting. Obviously, there's a, there's a training component to starting to move into inspections. That is on the goal of the that you'll see that's coming up. But uh, I really have no concerns that we're going to be able to touch a few more places as far as annual inspections. Uh, the building inspector has also noted that it's been a little bit easier where if we're at a spec an inspection, we have the ability to allow the truck to roll out the door if it's a motor vehicle accident or a fire alarm. Um, so we don't have to consistently leave the inspection and then try and reschedule it or come back. So that's not positive as well. Um, so those are the biggest things, and I, I hope you're I hope you're all getting good feedback on it. And uh, I'm really really proud of it. It's it's been a long long time coming, and again I know that we still have a, a long way to go, but we've created a foundation uh, with some really good officers and firefighters that it's really exciting. So thank you all of you for that. Uh, the other big thing that we had this past year, obviously there's a hundred small things that I could go over with you every day the everyday stuff, but the other milestone for us was uh, it was a regional grant that we received $50,000 the state. Uh, it was a state Commonwealth security grant. And it started over a year ago with planning and reviewing our active shooter uh, planning. Um, and this past year, Mike Mason, myself, members of his officer, of his uh, executive staff and mine, uh, we worked with the Hampshire Regional Emergency Planning Group to actually uh, go through a number of trainings from uh, warm zone training so our firefighters are, train, are trained on rescue task forces called so we can go in and actually pull people out of a building in, a, in an area that's been controlled in an active <coughs> situation. We've learned stop and lead training which we're now putting out to schools and, and everywhere else. It's the hot topic and you know we all see how much it happens unfortunately it happens more often than not but I can tell you that we, we had a very large full-scale exercise at the mall where we had an opportunity to not only train with our simulation simulation rounds for the police side so they could actually train making entry into an active shooter situation but then they were also there working with fire units and EMS units to actually do that next step where we're actually going into the space and um, and pulling people out and, and putting tourniquets on stopping the bleed and trying to you know preserve life uh, as quickly as we can. And folks were moved out of shop. We had Girl Scouts, we had members of the Hopkins Academy, um, we had regular public folks from the public that came out and acted as those those actors for us, making it extremely lifelike. And I can tell you that your firefighters and, and police officers worked really, really hard on uh, it was as real as you can get, basically. We also have the opportunity, Mike and I, to actually establish command and practice our command structure. So Mike, you know, we're, we don't have large departments, so if we have an incident, Mike would be part of that entry team that would be going in to stop the shooting. So we have a very good plan where, as the fire chief, I would come in and handle that incident command structure for him, setting up his communications and, and kind of being the guy outside until he can step back. And don't come into that unified command role until you know when more resources in it. It actually worked out quite well, and uh, Mass Emergency Management, all of our regional and state partners were there assisting us, and I think it was a, a very successful event for us. And we did receive a base plan uh, that we can now build upon and improve. We've already made a couple of improvements to it on responses, but that was another very large, large uh, addition to our SEM plan, our community emergency response plan. So that was also very successful. Thing. Another really uh, positive thing for us, uh, we work consistently with Officer Romano, uh, school resource officer. And you know, this past year, we actually implemented our own junior firefighter program. My son Gage and one of his friends, Liam Higgins, assisted me in putting together the uh, standard operating procedures and basically what it takes and what the requirements are to become a junior member. I can tell you that uh, as of last month, Liam Higgins turned 18. He is very interested in becoming a member of the fire service, and he is moving into a call force probationary firefighter position. My son will be turning uh, 18 in February. So 
At that time, both of them will be entering the next Hampshire County Basic 6 program where they'll have their basic training and then actually be able to start working on the fire ground, not interior attack, but obviously on the fire ground to assist us in responding to uh, incidences. So they created that foundation for us and we're starting to get some interest from some other youngsters and we're actually still working with the schools and potentially trying to uh, put some type, type of a, a classroom program together um, that we can move into the, into the schools. Okay. They also put together, uh, they helped me put together the emergency to-go bags that have now been installed in Hadley Elementary School in the Chinese Immersion. Hopkins bags have been completed. They're going to be installing those in the next week or so. Those are all, they, all the teachers have been trained on what's inside of them, what the purpose is for them. And they've actually been practicing that when we have a fire drill or a lockdown that they're getting their emergency to-go bags and they're ready and, and, and they're going on with them. Um, Another big thing, we were asked to try and streamline expenses between departments. So uh, over the past five years, I've been working on really trying to crack down and streamline our extinguisher program. Uh, that was very successful over the past few years where we now have a, a full understanding of what we have. Uh, initially thought we had 80 extinguishers. We actually have over 230 extinguishers in town of Hadley. And they are now on an inspection program so we can evaluate what the cost is going to be over the period. All the money funding has been moved into my budget, and it's actually <coughs> increased that cost. We will see fluctuations up in some years when there's testing required, but we have a pretty good handle on what we have for those resources as well. Um, and again, we're looking at any potential way that we can try and save costs by uh, ordering together. For example, this coming year, uh, you'll hear in my, my uh, schools in Texas a lot next year, but uh, we're actually working with the schools. We are conducting monthly inspections of all the AEDs in the community. So we're actually making sure that the batteries and the, the pads are not expired and everything's on door and working well. So once a month, one of our crews will be going through the schools and the other at the senior center so that we don't have any situations where we might have uh, a deficiency uh, on a very important device. Uh, we're working very closely with the athletic department. Uh, we have I've been volunteering time to try and save funding, uh, having our EMTs that are on duty, uh, standing at some of the games, the home games, so that they don't have to hire trainers. And we provide that EMS for them. The ambulance has been parking over there, which the parents seem to really like, so they'll stop in. And uh, I think it's been really good. We're really trying to partner with all of our other departments. Um, this guy, he, he knows how much we've worked together, and <laughs> I wish he wasn't leaving because he was one of the three M's. So <laughs> another, another M, but um, <clears throat> obviously the, the number of uh, building maintenance things that we've been going through, he's been, um, it's been difficult trying to schedule them all and work through who's responsible for what. Ultimately, he's responsible for it, and I think we worked really well in getting that command structure down with the work order process and making sure that uh, he was aware of what was going on so he could ensure that our budget was was uh, staying where it was supposed to be. So by the end of the year, we would have the funding needed to finish out contracts and, and other items. So very good communication. So that's that's in a nutshell. Uh, I'm sorry, it wasn't three minutes, but. <laughs> Uh, on the goals and objective side, uh, basically for this coming year, obviously uh, the priority for, for, my, for myself is the daily operations of the fire department. I can't tell you what's going to happen from one day to another. And you can see that every day it's consistently you have something planned in your head and 16 different calls come in or uh, there's somebody walks in and he's somehow immediately on a project or whatever. And we're it's easier to get it done than to have to stop stop them, have them come back and, and try and reschedule. So we really try to accommodate as much as we can. Uh, so the daily operations of the department is the number one priority, and that's just ongoing. Uh, the dis uh, fire department and uh, dispatch center standard operating procedures, that is my highest priority this year. So we have Lexipol, it's a, it's a web-based uh, service where we have all of our SOPs and SOGs on online right now, but they have to be reviewed by myself and my deputy, and we have to start signing off on them, customizing and making any, ch any changes that we need to them. So that's my priority for this year. We really want to have 
the ability to hand it out to all of our folks, not the old laminated cards and, and stuff that we have in place right now. We want to actually uh, utilize the system which provides training as well, so they'll be able to actually uh, test out on specific standard operating procedures weekly, monthly, however we want to set it up, so we know that they're actually understanding what they're reading and are, are capable of, of actually doing that. So uh, that's the biggest focus I have for this year. Um, Mike, can I just ask, it says date yes. of implementation November 1st, but then it says date of review April, completion May 15th, 2019. So. Yeah, I'm just gonna give you, I'll give you, a, it can take me up, to, it takes up to four to six months to go through all of, of they, they told me just be prepared, it's gonna take you quite a bit of time to do it, plus we have to implement our own. So there's the standard ones that you see that are reviewed annually by Lexifol that are basically more based upon the NFPA standard, state regulation, all that stuff. But we still have to review and make sure that we understand them and, and pass them forward. But the other ones are just our internal policies and procedures that some of them we actually have to enter in and, and actually create. They'll so, be rolling some of those out. As soon as possible. Oh, they'll be rolling out consistently. Just when you have that, now that you have staff, you know, then. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, I, well, we have policies and procedures in place right now. It's just they're very hampered. They're, so, they're just updating. I mean, every year they, you know, these type of things change. So they're doing updates at this point. Well, we're actually, and we're going to be revamping our entire SOP okay. process. So, but like I said, we do have, we do have policies in place right now. It's just they're not, it's not something that's conducive to the new department. So that's the priority. Okay. Oh, just so, so you'd be able to like maybe even do it in batches stuff? It's going to so be so consistent. We're not, we're not waiting until really everything's done. No. And then, okay. No, no, no. Okay. It's okay. ongoing. What's that? It's ongoing. But these yeah. aren't things that we review and put into place. No. No, no this is his. Yeah. Yes. No, this all came with 911. They're updating it on a regular basis. I don't want, I mean, basically on the dispatch side, it's more just for how we're dispatching police and fire, you know, police and fire for the on the fire side. But there are some pretty specific things that we need to have in place for the dispatchers to understand. So we have how they dispatch the ambulance. Uh, we have how they're supposed to dispatch for a motor vehicle accident. But we're actually hoping that we might be able to go into a more of a run car, cell alarm, box alarm. So we're moving into that where it's a little bit more clear uh, and a little bit more abbreviated how they're dispatching us. So that's that portion. Uh, completion of projects. Um, folks have been in my office, they see the paper files, and the hope is with this new emergency reporting system that we Are have. Are you related to him? I am. We're, we're <laughs> okay. I could probably, uh, I could give him a good run for his money. But, uh, no, anyway, some of the boxes. <laughs> well, I was—I don't know if you remember, John, but a lot of that paper has your name on it. Uh, so, <laughs> I'm going to ask it. Anyways. I know. I think I was on like the fifth filing cabinet when yes. I was there. So we're filing through all that. Um, however, our new emergency reporting system does allow for us to start scanning and doing inspections. So we're looking at our interns, some of our younger folks maybe start entering some of this. Uh, and I think a lot of the, the paper that you're, we're used to seeing, so the handwritten run reports, things like that, are <coughs> going to be going to the wayside that's going to be in the emergency reports. Uh, also, I'll be immersing myself back into the, the North Hadley fire substation project that's Yay. started up again. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we received the old design yeah. documents this past week, so we're going through that to ensure that we're putting together a building that you know is is prep for a potential of future expansion if needed. Uh, just making sure that we have all our ducks in a row, and the committee is very proactive and very is working really hard on making sure that we're staying on track, staying on budget, and that we're utilizing the space that you guys have provided us the best we can. And uh, I think you'll you'll like the product, and I think the folks that live up there will as well. Will you be staying close to the planning board throughout the process? <laughs> Yes, actually, um, He's gonna we're be sleeping with him. just so you know. <laughs> <laughs> Not really. <laughs> we are having a public presentation on the 29th, yeah. Thursday. 
The 29th, correct? Right? Yes. It's yes. 6 p.m. Yes. at the Hadley Public Safety Complex. Yes. So it's going to allow for folks to come and take a look at some of the initial designs, the location on the lot, and we'll give you all the information that we have up to date. Um, so that everybody's aware of exactly what's going on. It's the, it's the exact same layout of the building, just on a different lot. So the lot, uh, the building that you saw on the North Alley ball field is pretty much the same design that you're seeing being placed on that. Mike, the 29th is a Saturday. What's that? 29th. It's a Thursday. It's a Thursday. The 27th? 27th. Sorry. Sorry about that. 27th. Yeah. Uh, September. Yes. Yeah, so that's the same night as the library spelling bee fundraiser, right? Sure. <laughs> we'll be right over after that. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> We're practicing our words. That's only my command on the team set. <laughs> Uh, and again, uh, the emergency reporting system that I told you about, we had originally been uh, utilizing a different program, but they were a little bit slow getting uh, the M for size, so the mass fire incident reporting system, software that we have to report to the state. We were actually entering it manually into a very old computer, and it was very, it would take hours uh, to get our reports done. Uh, this, every time the, the company comes back from call, it's put right into the system and it's sent to the state uh, via email, basically. So we've actually are now finally, another big yay, finally, uh, <laughs> complying with getting in reports to the state, which is huge for us. Mm -hmm. um, another one, and not so much of a, a stress, but I, I was asked uh, a few years ago to review the MRI report and just to go through and actually check off and update the select board, so I'm putting that under my goals to to go through that document and uh, evaluate where we're at. And I think we've we've tackled quite a bit, and I'm looking forward to making that presentation to you. Um, and the last part is we're <coughs> continuously updating our SEMP plan, our community emergency response plan under the under emergency management. And this year, our goal is working again with the public schools on. Uh, uh, reunification and and actually moving students to a, an alternate, you know, an evacuation site, uh, and then setting up a reunification uh, site for them to be put back together with parents and family <coughs> members. So we are we are working on that as well. Uh, there's a hundred other things that we have on the plate, and there's grant money we're looking for this year. The safe program we are applying for the safe senior and student safe program again. So our firefighters will be going out educating the students and seniors. We have uh, a plan right now. We are working down at uh, Winfield. Uh, we have one, we have a, um, a resident down there who's who's working with us. We've reached out and we're working on making sure that the evacuation plans again are, are very well exercised and they understand exactly what to do if they burn their bacon or whatever. Um, so we're, we're following up with that, and we're working with the ownership to ensure that the building is maintained, and we're, we're very busy. So thank you again, and those are my goals and practices this year. Quick question on um, inspections. Mm -hmm. How now, with okay, the ambulance service up and running and everything, but are you able now to start getting caught up a little bit more on the fire inspections? That's that's what the, one of the goals is to, um, we're, we're actually putting together a master list. So the inspections that are occurring already, obviously under Mass General Law for liquor licenses, uh, the quarterly inspections for, uh, their, you know, for example, Sunbridge, uh, Golden Court, all these other spaces that we go through. Uh, those are pretty much set in stone and there's a large number of them. Um, we are now adding in uh, as many as we can. The problem is we, start, we just started you know, we're two months in. So educating the folks we brought on board, uh, I'm working with Evan on that to make sure that if we're sending a crew out to do this, they're very familiar with what they're looking at. So for example, Brian and I, Final Sheriff's and I are, he has been assigned tank truck permits. So tank truck permits are due this year, it's every other year they're, they're due. So he's done, I can't even tell you how many tank truck permits. That's his assignment with his staff member. He's also going to be responsible for gas stations. So gas stations are in a three-year permitting process. 
So every year we try to get into the gas stations to make sure that they're everything's safe. Um, so he's going to be responsible for that. Nick, on the other hand, is going to be responsible for home inspections, for home sales. So there's the annual inspection that we're all hoping we can get more in, but we're, we have probably 25 to 30 other required inspections just for oil burners, propane tanks, and everything else. So yeah, you should be seeing an increase in inspections. Plan reviews, that's still based, that's a very specific thing. Um, site plan review and then review of building. That's under my purview still right now. Evan is going to be working towards um, getting more in depth into that with me. But at this point, uh, I've had a lot of education on the building side, being in, in, the, in the trades uh, and working with, with him. Um, so those plan reviews right now, if it's not a simple residential project, I'm talking about, for example, the new, the new hotel. There's some very specific stuff that requires some pretty in-depth knowledge and, and experience in reviewing the codes and making sure working with the state fire marshal's office so those are the things that i'll still be handling at this point i guess you should be seeing okay. sounds good thank you very much very detailed this evening good job <laughs> and plug the, uh, <laughs> <laughs> the annual chicken barbecue is yes. friday this week is friday at the Hadley Young Guns Club. And Joyce will be speaking, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that one. Oh, you're not speaking? No. Okay. Um, no. You are now. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have to FaceTime you from Salisbury. Okay. Yeah, so tickets can, can be picked up the day of the event, or you can pick them up now at the fire station. Um, you can go to the dispatch center and we'll come down to the neighbor ticket if you'd like. And it's usually quite tasty, and there was a band again this year, so you can come out and six, enjoy the six, weather. Six to ten? Six to ten. What's the cost of the tickets? The tickets are two yeah. for fifteen, seventeen dollars a piece. All right, I'm, I'm sorry, two for thirty. Seventeen dollars a piece. There you go. Well, Second aspect of it is that it is a 500 acre minimum uh, uh, area that has to the, 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 it has to be met. And so what that means is um, there has to be 500 acres uh, together or surrounding other conserved lands, unbroken by a road to, to meet the, the minimum qualification for this grant. Once you've got the 500 acres, you can then cross roads and, and, and uh, conserve additional lands with the grant. Uh, the, grant op the grant is for uh, a match for up to $1.25 million. And the, the third aspect of it is that um, it, uh, I'm trying to blank. Um, what's the third aspect of it, Jen? Well, you cover the fact that it's a partnership. Um, I'm grasping here. So it's municipal and nonprofit and governmental agency, and it is a one to one match right. uh, for dollars spent. The state will match you a dollar and for a maximum of the 1.25. Um, I think you should yeah. just keep going forward, <laughs> and when that third thing arises, sure, yeah. Work it out. Right <laughs> okay. Um, so, um, 
Uh, it's right, you know, to put the 500 acres together is in an unroaded area is very difficult now uh, because uh, the land is very checkerboarded in terms of roads and development and already conserved lands. Um, last time the grant came around, uh, a, lot, a lot of land was protected on the east side of the Holyoke Range. This time we're hoping to protect land on the west side of the Holyoke Range and also areas connecting the range to other uh, important conservation resources such as the Connecticut River and the Fork River. Um, uh, the town has uh, about 320 acres of land, watershed land, up on the range right now that we don't believe is protected under Article 97, so it's not permanently conserved. It would go a long way to, to making the match for that grant. Um, that's the third aspect of the match part. So, um, so the, the match can be in terms of dollars and donations or contributions. Sometimes it's town CPA money, sometimes DCR kicks in some money, uh, sometimes uh, private, uh, uh, sometimes land trusts raise money. Uh, other times it's, it's contributions of land, donated land, donated conservation restrictions on land. Um, so we are hoping the town would consider um, uh, uh, granting a conservation restriction on those 320 acres of land or, or some of that 320 acres of land to help meet this match and meet the 500 acre uh, road in this area. We have some other potential partners, uh, Amherst College, uh, Mount Holyoke College owned land up on the range and we've, we've been discussing with them. Uh, they've responded positively about protecting their land. Um, uh, in addition to that 320 acres on the range, um, it was brought to our attention that there are some parcels along the Connecticut River um, that the couple that the town has taken for back taxes and some, some more parcels that the town intends to take for back taxes. Um, those parcels are pretty much undevelopable. They're in the floodplain. Um, we think that those would be also a good match. It's about 40 acres total if the town goes ahead and takes the remaining, the remaining parcels that, that are which taxes are owed. Um, so, um, that land could also count as a match, even though it's across the road, it could also count as a match for the grant. That land, um, to sell it would probably be difficult because um, nobody's entirely sure where it is, and so part of the process would be to um, get it surveyed and identify it, uh, identify its location. Um, so I have some maps I can show you. Um, the first map is of tax parcels as far as we know as far as you know we know what we think they might be um, pass that around and the second map is of the parcels up on, the watershed parcels up on the range these parcels were acquired by the town in the 1950s and and Janice Janice Stone has looked into the disposition of those parcels in terms of you know were they conceivably protected under article 97 she hasn't been able to find, find anything, anything on that yeah. Certainly. So, a few questions. Sure. This came up at our last meeting. We put it off so we could get you guys here and talk to you. But um, Kestrel land and DCR land tends to be posted, uh, if not immediately uh, after it's established several years down the road, that it's no hunting, no fishing. If you look at uh, Moody Bridge Road and the, uh, the wildlife refuge there, it's all posted, no hunting. Um, we've got a, had a lot of concern from people that heard that we might be giving conservation rights uh, for town land, that the land uh, may be posted, no fishing, no hunting. Uh, the, the town's you know, a huge supporter of sure. conservation land, but it seems that the conservation land is directed to certain areas of outdoor recreation and the hunters tend to be excluded, the snowmobilers tend to be excluded, the ATV sure. riders tend to be excluded. And if we're giving away the rights to town on land, um, that that can't happen and, and something that I support. Um, and I would also like to know what's the benefit of giving this conservation rights to Kestrel or to DCR versus the town just establishing our own conservation land and right, maintaining all the rights that so we can decide in the future what to do with our own land. Sure. So to answer the first question, the conservation restriction doesn't have to be structured to prohibit hunting and fishing. Um, and there's a lot of Kestrel property 
and Keswick conservation restrictions uh, where hunting and fishing is allowed or not disallowed. So it's left up to the landowner, in which case that would be the town, to decide you know, what kind of uses would be allowed out there. Um, snow, like, likewise for snowmobiling. Typically, motorized vehicles are prohibited other than snowmobiles. Um, so wheeled motorized vehicles, except for handicapped accessible vehicles. So we could preserve snowmobiling rights? You could preserve snowmobiling rights, that's correct. I don't know about DCR lands, but Jen can address. Very similar, very similar. Yeah. Um, we have CRs um, that are, that allow hunting, that allow fishing, um, and again, snowmobiles, typically not ATVs. Um, we have designated state forests throughout the whole state. There's, I think, four of them at this point that are open, specifically open to ATV, but as a rule, not ATV use. Um, but the beauty of a CR is that the conservation restriction that is held by Kestrel or DCR restricts the owner from developing the property for houses or businesses, you know, commercial, any kind of building. Um, but the landowner still owns the land. And, you know, hunting can be worked into the CR, fishing can be worked into the CR. So that, that's not an automatic no. There are areas at Skinner, because of the way Skinner <coughs> came into state ownership, that hunting was prohibited. But that's only a very, uh, it, it makes sense. It's the area around the summit house. You know, the, that's not a great place to have a lot of firearms going off. I can just tell you from last week uh, on Tremont Road uh, on private property, we, we had an issue with a, a DCR employee telling us that we were not allowed to hunt anywhere on state owned lands or DCR property, even when we were on private lands, and tried to run us off until we were able to pull up the, the laws on the, on the mass uh, fishing campsite and, and show them that's not the case. So, and, I, as a hunter, and others have run into that quite a bit with DCR lands. So I, uh, I just find it hard to. It's a tough. It's it's a it's a weird um, boundary between Skinner and Holyoke Range. I mean, there is. Uh, I was asked to to try and determine based on the deeds. You know, okay, what's open, what's not, and I was referring it to it as the Mason Dixon lines. <laughs> You know, so that that is unfortunate, and I apologize for that. And then available could you, to could you answer his question though? What would be the difference in in us keeping our own land and and giving it to you? Why, if we kept it in preserve or conservation? Sure, sure. I mean, the the, the main benefit is that that by by putting a conservation restriction on it and partnering with this with this for this grant, we can conserve more land. It counts as the match for that grant. It also counts to to make that five hundred acre area. We probably, it would be very difficult for us to come up with that 500 acres without the 320 acres that the town has. So in, 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 in participating in this grant and putting a CR on that land, um, you would be able to help the community conserve more land, some of it in Hadley. We're talking to at least three landowners in the Shimura Road area. We're conserving more there. I guess I'm, I'm not getting why yeah. yeah, can't the town just put our own conservation restrictions on the land? And, and you can't hold your own you conservation restriction okay. or designate it as you could land that you know that's preserved by the town somehow <coughs> rather than give it a yeah. right. You yeah. could, but you would, but you wouldn't be able to participate in this grant if you were to. What do we if, get from the grant? You get from the grant the, the ability for for more match funding to apply to conserve other land. So you get more conservation out of it. And you also ensure that the grant can actually take place. Like I said, we're up to 500 acres. Um, the grant won't, we won't qualify for the grant. So where does the money go from the grant, though? I guess I'm not understanding. Is it that. Kessel? The grant, goes, the grant goes to purchase land and purchase conservation restrictions on land. So, so for instance, the, the three private landowners that we're talking to right now in the, in the area, um, the money would go to get conservation restrictions on the land, or to get the land itself to be conserved. So you would, buy, you would buy buy the land from them. You buy the land from them, <coughs> okay. or buy a conservation restriction on the land. And strictly in the town of Hadley. There are three parcels in Hadley. We're also we're looking at land over the entire area. So we're also looking to partner with other towns, partner with the state and protect land in the range in general. So there are parcels we're looking at in Hadley, 
There are parcels we're looking at in South Hadley. There are some parcels in Amherst. But most of it is going to be in Hadley and then, well, I'll say probably about, at least the stuff we're looking at right now, about a, half of it is in Hadley and some of it is in South Hadley and some of it is in Hadley. Janice, you had it. Yeah, I'll just say um, I was involved in this landscape partnership grant the last time around when I was working in South Hadley, and we had a number of parcels on the range that were put in that were put into permanent conservation. And two of the things: first of all, a lot of the ones up on the range, there's no way that we have staff to monitor, maintain, or anything these properties. If they have a conservation restriction on them, the town still owns those range ones, but then Kestrel or someone who holds the conservation restriction then has a certain responsibility to at least monitor the sites. And I just know from town hall occasions there are problems on any of these, you know, properties that are that are undeveloped in town. And it strains our resources. Certainly conservation can't do anything and there isn't that much staff in town to be able to handle things. So it's nice to have some other group helping to maintain that property. Um, the other thing is that we had a number of parcels on the range that the um, documentation was really unclear and the deeds are really poor. And it took um, this grant paid for a lawyer to go through and straighten out the titles and then create new deeds. And at least in South Hadley, I know the assessors were really helpful with that because there's some kind of mandate that you're supposed to have, sort of, you're supposed to be aware of exactly, you know, what land is owned in town and, and the proper deeds and everything. I, I don't know how exactly that goes, but. It, it benefited them as well as it, it did us to get those deeds straightened out. So I, I just found that a really uh, good help as well. And I, I do share your concern about the, the you know, the, the restriction to access and hunting and fishing. I can, I can just be glad to share with you, we have conservation restrictions on other lands where hunting, hunting and fishing is definitely written into the conservation restriction deed and I can share those deeds with you. Well, I mean, I'm just looking at the, uh, the okay. The 40 acres that we added to the um, Silvio Conte uh, refuge. I don't know of any land that's part of that refuge. That's, that's, so that's federal. That's federal. And that land is purchased with federal funds specifically targeted for a different conservation purpose. Right, but what you're asking is for the town to sell 40 acres. Not, not to sell. Uh, let's see. 40 acres below market value. Oh, the uh, below the tax market. title properties. Right. Excuse me. Yeah, I, I was thinking about your water department. So, so in my mind, we're giving away a town resource at a discount, and then losing the rights to use that as for recreational purposes or for hunting and fishing in, in our own town. Well, those riverfront properties are probably going to stay open to use to, to fishing. Um, more than <laughs> I mean, is there a way to assure that people can fish? Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, it's public funds, it's open to the public. The fishing would definitely be allowed. I think the only restriction on hunting would be state laws regarding how close you are to a residence when you shoot the gun. Yeah, but that's not how Moody Ridge Road is and all the other areas. Right, and that's not there. DCR land. That's federal. Yeah. That's a it's different landowner. And, and you are restricted up on Hoyle Range. The uh, DCR Skinner, is very, yes. the DCR is very heavy on the DC and very very light on the recreation. None, as far as I'm concerned. There's hunt. I grew up on that mountain. I was born on Schmerner Road, and we hunted, we dirt bike, we four wheeled, and we still do up there on our property. And there's many other pieces of property that you don't own on that Hoyle. I've been to Pennsylvania for 20 something years now. Mm -hmm. Maine, they have uh, biking, hiking, horseback, dirt bikes, sure. four wheelers, everything on the same trails. And they're basically maintained by motorized vehicles. And everybody's ignoring these facts. Why is the state of Massachusetts doing that and Kestrel Trust? Well, the state, regarding motorized vehicles, wheeled motorized vehicles, the state often as a condition of these grants prohibits it because of the, the impact of the, the wheeled vehicles. They, most of these uh, conservation restrictions allow for 
um, uh, snowmobiles, they allow for hunting, they allow for fishing. Once again, this is not the federal land, this is not, um, this is not even state land, this would be your land, this would be the town land, and the town would, with Kestrel, craft the conditions of those conservation restrictions on the land. Paul, the town that, would be would be participating in the drafting of those restrictions. I think the confusion, Paul, is that in, in the public content that we're looking at, um, just under the 40 acre, the tax title, mm -hmm. the last sentence reads, um, comma, fee interest in these parcels for possible inclusion in the Connecticut River Greenway State Park or the Conti National Wildlife Refuge. I think the objection that you're hearing is that if there's so a possibility of it being included in federal, well, people are concerned about losing. We can certainly, we can certainly not not consider the uh, federal ownership. But that's just, is it possible right. to yeah. exclude any possibility of Yeah, absolutely. It's your land. Order? It's your land. Well, or some of it will be <laughs> if you take it. But, and uh, we can certainly work with you to, to see that the ownership of it ends up where you want. Solid to uh, review. I am not for this. Yeah. Uh, we are too restricted right now in this town for our community and for what we do with our land. Conservation land is fantastic if the residents can can use that conservation land for outdoor Agreed. recreation activities. Yeah. But when they're all recreation, yeah, when they're prohibited from using their own town land, that's that's not satisfactory. But, but that's not what the aim that we're looking to see. But that's what happens, unfortunately. Well, but that's up to you. It depends on how it how it's drawn up to, right. for our exactly. to our benefit. So if, if we were it's a partnership. <coughs> it's not it's not somebody coming in and telling what to do. It's a partnership. You partner with with us and with DCR and to get the outcome that you want. So if if we were to, it sounds like what you're asking for is a letter of support. That's is that right. So if we were to surprise provide the Surprise. letter of support <laughs> <laughs> provide the letter of support could we uh, it, it sounds like then there at the actual contracting process we would have that opportunity to make sure Absolutely. that that language that protects our you know, because I agree with these guys. I think it's, a lot of folks want to make sure that we're not, you're not just, peeling away their access to public land. So right, you, you're not just agreeing to whatever. You're agreeing to say, sure, we're interested in partnering with you on this grant. Um, we want certain things out of the grant. We want certain recreational mm -hmm. rights, which which we support as well. Um, and and when we draft up a conservation restriction. But when you decide who the Connecticut River parcels go to, if you don't want to own them yourself, which is another possibility, um, that is the negotiation process. And if you don't like how the negotiation is going, you say no. At any point, you say no, and it stops. And that's how it works. Yeah, so it's really up to you. I have to see it in writing. I, I, you know, I, and I want somebody right else now to review it. I've seen the direction the DCR and you folks have gone in this time. And it's restricted the hell out of us. I would uh, make a motion to deny the letter of support at this time until we can have something more solid to review. What would you like? I would like a written, um, I guess, something solid to look at before we even consider granting rights. Who, does the, who does the draft? Right. The drafting would be a collaboration between the town and whoever is holding the CR. Okay. Maybe if we can come up with that and then we can look at it as a board before we even yep. agree to start uh, you know, supporting the project. And that, that's something I could support if we have something solid. Is there a time frame on it? Continue it rather than deny it? So the, the time frame on, on getting the general letter of support, and like I said, you're, you can say no at any point. There's nothing in saying, sure, we're, we're interested in maybe participating in this grant. Um, uh, doesn't mean that you have to go down the road with it. Um, it just means that you have an interest in doing so. Oh, you have a deadline because for It's not committing support. anything at this point. It's just saying, sure, we're interested in partnering. Um, but like I said, at any point, you can back out of it if it's not agreeable to you. What's your deadline? The deadline is October 10th, I believe. For 15 the, is, the, is the deadline for the grant. Yeah, so we have to submit a proposal to the state by the 18th, identifying the partners and identifying the, the potential uh, parcels of land. I mean, the first time we saw this was a week ago. It's kind of a mm -hmm. short turnaround. They, 
you know, the, 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 I just started the trust in, in, in I'm, from, I'm from New Hampshire, I just started the trust in, in, uh, in June, and the trust has been understaffed, and I was just handed this and said, run with it and try to make it happen in a short time, time frame. So that's, what, that's why I'm bringing it to you at this late date, and I apologize for that. Um, I, can send you, I can send you a draft conservation restriction with hunting and fishing and snowmobiling in it for, to look at it. It's in that tomorrow. We have another meeting on October 3rd. October 3rd. We could bring this up. Could you send him a draft before before then so he can have a look at it? I can. I can send him a public hearing on it. Public well. hearing, too. Yeah, absolutely. Public on this because this is something that we should be giving yeah. away town, town land or rights to the town land without the public input. Mm. So just, just to be clear, that by a letter of support saying that you may be interested in participating in this project, you're not giving away anything. I was going to say you can have a public hearing after no, you just, send that letter. I, 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 no, my motion stands. I, I, can't, um, I can't support even the, the letter of support at this time until we have something more to look at. I mean, we're, we're voting on paper where there's nothing at this point. No, I don't want to make a motion either unless I see what. what no, and I, and I think a public hearing, you're going to have handfuls of people in here that have been restricted, just like I said, because I've been hearing it already. That's the flavor of the board. So we can continue it or we can continue? Do a continuation and have a public hearing on this? Okay, I'll withdraw my motion to deny the letter. Okay, and then we will have a public hearing on this. Uh, what do we I'll have? Second. Huh? And we, do we have I'll time second. for a public okay. hearing, David? How uh, do you mean there's posting requirements? In terms of posting requirements, there's no, this is not governed by Mass General Law, so you can okay. make so it. So we have time to go ahead. You have plenty, 48 hours, I guess. Really? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, so part of the process of being able to apply for the grant means that we need to get a Kind of a simple ballpark appraisal on these various parcels which could be included in it um, and we have to get the appraiser rolling on doing that would it be okay if we had an appraiser look at these parcels and just get a figure on what they might be worth in the meantime i don't have a problem with that it's going to cost the town anything it's not going to cost you a time mm -hmm. yeah. exactly. and just on the mechanics of this if we were to do it do would we be putting any money up front for this land or are we just basically it's just the land swap so to speak or the land is somehow you would, this equity. you would not be putting any money up you would probably be getting some money out of the river parcels um, and you would be seeing other land conserved in the town as a result and, and don't get me wrong the conservation is fantastic and I think all of us are for conservation it's just the restrictions that we I, I am in complete, I'm from New Hampshire, I'm in agreement with you. So, so <laughs> live free, yeah, right, live free. Exactly. <laughs> and and all, uh, many of the conservation restrictions in New New Hampshire, almost all of them were allowed hunting and fishing and snowmobiling, and many of them were allowed to do more. So, um, I'm with you on that. And some of New Hampshire actually does have four wheelers and yes, buying right. trails up there. Also. They do, yeah. they do, yeah. Jericho State. Yeah. See, this all came about when DCR took over the top of the mountain and they thought they owned every parcel of land. And my family owned a parcel of land up there. And the bike trail, the riding trail, went through it without our permission. Uh, whichever color trail it is. But they're still going through it. Some of the private property up there. And they, the bikes don't have permission. If somebody gets hurt up there, who's going to be responsible for it? Yeah, some of the some of the bike groups um, are notorious for building bootleg trails, and that's yep. something I know DCR is concerned about, and we're concerned about because of the. Interest. I did too with the dirt bikes and the four wheelers, but we maintained those trails for years and years and years, sure. right? and we shared them with everyone. Sure, cross country skiers and all. Understood. Yeah. I used to go from the center of town up to the top of the mountain hmm. myself. Imagine that. Yeah. 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 Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thanks for coming in. I do, do appreciate it. We'll take this under consideration and have. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. See ya. Where are we now? It's 8.30. The jerk is not on the agenda tonight.
tonight. Okay. It's we've taken that off for tonight. Oh. It's a special time. <laughs> Special. <laughs> Extra special. Extra special. Um, yeah, change that one item. Yeah, let's let's do let's. Um, did you have anything specific for tonight? No. We're just here because last week we weren't here. Okay. <laughs> and there was sort of that generic line in the agenda, which is just the update, and then it turned into a big thing, and we weren't here, so Oopa. we're here now. <laughs> just in case, just here we are. Awesome. We're not <laughs> <laughs> we're not <laughs> Okay, it's your turn. Do you have anything for tonight? <laughs> no. Nope. No. Okay. Uh, well, well, so nothing from the senior from the library senior center. Um, there was a meeting last night, uh, and we're having a Wuha meeting next Tuesday with the planning board and everybody. But um, I think the senior center is having a meeting from my messages I got today on Monday um, to reevaluate the size of the building. Um, they are. Uh, taking our direction and decreasing the size of the building from what I understand. Yeah, that's the, the plan is, you know, based on the meeting last night, I think it was pretty clear that the path forward of trying to achieve two for one parking with the current senior center size is not going to be able to pass through the planning board. Um, so it's disappointing, but um, in order to keep the senior center on track, um, we're going to meet on Monday to vote on reducing the size of the senior center uh, to, you know, that 10,000 range square footage to meet the parking two for one on the site. Um, it looks like it's going to be about an eight week conceptual redesign um, phase. So we would go back to the planning board to get site plan approval on I think the date was November 20th. So you'll, you'll still meet the date that they set last night? That is the plan. That's why we set that date out farther mm -hmm. so that it was an achievable goal because with changing the size of the senior center, it's going to change the parking lot, which is going to change the drainage plan, you know, change the lighting plan. All these things will trickle down. So um, that gives time to do that. Um, you know, really, the you know, it's going to cost a lot of money to do this redesign work that money is coming out of the contingency, um, really, from the design. And so before, we had a construction contingency of about 7.5%. And now we're down to you know roughly a 5% um, construction contingency uh, based on with this. Based on the projected cost of the redesign? Based on this projected you know, based on the projected cost of the redesign and the, pot, you know, there's pluses and minuses. So you save some in construction, but you lose some because we have to redo construction documentation and all that kind of stuff. So um, it's there. Uh, but yeah. we know with the wonderful world of graphics that's out there today, it's certainly not going back to the drawing board. It's not so, completely going back to the drawing board, and we have some, no. you know, it's changing the layout of the space, you know, to, so, to accommodate the smaller footprints and all that kind so of stuff. So the main thing is, is that I think that the board wanted to see is that we could get the 10,350 square foot building on that with no problem with the amount of parking that needed to get done. Yes. And we can certainly work on the interior of the building um, as long as we could get that footprint out to the planning board to show how it would be designed on the lot and at least have a preliminary that we might be able to give them ahead of time and then the final drawings and whatever on November 20th. You know, I don't know if you could yeah, you know, yeah. mention I mean, that I, to I, them. Yeah, I did Monday. already talk to them today, okay. uh, talk to the OPM today about just mm -hmm. wanting to get this in front of the planning board as soon as possible, mm -hmm. wanting to not dive into detailed design before we have that approval. Mm -hmm. Um, so, so that's kind of the plan okay. right now. Okay. It's not like the planning board more worried about the footprint than they were on anything on the inside. Yet. They seem well, they don't care about what's yeah, in the building. Yeah. yeah, they they said that they stated that two or three of them stated that last night. But so. there's there's still just you know some amount of 
conceptual work you have to do. Yes. Or, I mean, it's like you wouldn't just put a, a foundation in yeah. the ground and then no. try to figure out where your bedrooms are later. I mean, yeah. <laughs> But you want a conceptual design, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, that's, you know, that's a given what, what it's going to take and what the well, outside is going to be. And, and yeah, yeah, like I said, the I really hope, I really hope the architect and the OPM come up with an exact number here, too, because we're from 800 to 4,000 square feet last night at that meeting still. There's well, not a true number. But they, they did say last night, though, that at that 10,350, it would meet, it would the, meet bylaw, that. the strip letter of bylaw. I mean, and let it, if, you, if we were that close with a 12,000 square yeah. foot building, it's yeah. going to have to work with a 10,000 yeah. square foot building. Mm -hmm. And uh, I will say for people watching at home for the first time, um, based on our straw poll, we've got maybe a chance at 4 to 1, maybe 5 to 0. There's a surprise coming there. That's right. Mm -hmm. but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so you know what way that surprise yeah, is coming. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but, but we're close to an approval, so I think we're all coming together on it. Um, I'm hoping. Yeah. So hopefully this is what pushes it forward and we can move on from here. Yeah. And again, we shouldn't I, be digging right now. I'll <coughs> you know? yeah. Well, I'll, I'll reiterate what I say. I think that, you know, we still, our goal is to make the best building possible. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's what we want to do. Uh, the sub-fire station met um, Monday night this week. Uh, we met with the OPM and um, Colliers, and we have started our project. Uh, we're looking at possibly a 13-month, 12 to 13-month uh, to completion of the building from uh, putting a shovel in the ground to 2019 to, of July to July of 2020. So uh, we're hoping for completion at that point in 2020. Uh, public forum will be on September 27th at 6 p.m. And that's to be determined yet. I believe it's going to be at the senior center, uh, not the senior, public safety complex that night. Yeah, that's what we're uh, so What time? 6 p.m. 6 o'clock. Mm -hmm. um, and that's just a presentation of the kind of building you're looking at. Building, yes. <coughs> well, it's actually basically the, the same building that was in North Hadley that's going to just get moved to the other end okay. um, with a little bit of what their drainage and things like that on the outside uh, still in the process of doing some surveying um, so say, will it show the situation on the yes. site okay because yes. a lot of people are asking the about plot that. the plot of the building for further expansion yep. that piece of property correct so the questions on the <coughs> so we have we have our wetlands and things like that you have to consideration but that's that's in the back. I was going to say, is Hab and Media going to be there, do you know, to record yes. that? Yes. There, okay. Yes. Yes. So that's where we are with that. Um, can we just go back to the library for a second? Sure. Just because um, we did have a building committee meeting on Monday night. Mm -hmm. um, so just by way of update, the, um, do you want to tell us what we looked at on Monday? So we looked at uh, the design. So we looked at three drawings on the screen. Which was really cool. It was very cool. Uh, just to make sure that we were happy with all the engineering that's being done. We're coming to the end of our design development phase and then we'll be ready to go into construction documents. Um, so after that, the next phase would be to be working on bid documents. But at that point, we would sort of be waiting to see what's happening with the um, the joint site plan and the timing to know whether or not we need to take a break before we go to the bid documents um, or whether we just go right into the bid documents and are able to to begin demolition but that's what and that's, that's one of the things I'm hoping um, uh, next week when we meet with the planning board you know again if, if mm -hmm. we're talking about kind of all of the um, ramifications or whatever you want to call it you know the paths forward here that whole timing discussion we should again that'd be better to have it sooner rather than later so there aren't any surprises so people understand what the possibilities are as we know what's going with um, the senior center okay. and i think there was some um, talk about some use and i think that'll come up next tuesday to the uh, building committee um, at you didn't make the last one, but I was there. Um, talked about possibly using downstairs in the library temporary for Channel 5. Um, it would be easier access to go downstairs <coughs> than to use the upstairs. 
But again, that's something that we want to have discussions with you about. Can you talk about, about what, what the timing of that would be? Do you mean after the library re relocates out of the building? No, bef no. Bef when the demolition of the Hooker School. If if the other senior center has not been built at that point or full and full just for a place for our Hadley TV to be temporarily. But it's oh, not ADA need, compliant. It's not, and that we use, I mean, that's the space that's But they don't have to be ADA compliant. Right, but it's a space that is in use by the library. I mean, we provide oh, okay. services in the basement, it's not just an empty basement. What are you using it for? Uh, I mean, collections, I mean, people use it for the, the young adult, you know, young, 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 the what? The children. young adult section, young adult department of the library, and okay. it's, it's, I mean, it's half of our... Well, we're, we'll have further discussion with you. I, okay. They, just, they were just tossing it around, and I didn't yeah. want that to be a surprise to you. Um, if well, you, it's a little bit of a surprise. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, if something it was just, just tossed fun. around. Okay. So I'm um, just putting it out there for right now for you to be aware of that either upstairs or downstairs, or you know even upstairs. So pardon. Do we know how much space it would be? How big is that room you're in now? Uh, about two hundred. No, five hundred square feet probably. Yeah, that's a fair amount. Of space. That's pretty big. Yeah. And they also have the server equipment and everything that needs to be yeah. housed somewhere. Yeah. But maybe the third floor? Conceivably. Yeah. Conceivably. So, I mean, the downstairs would be difficult because we have, I mean, we have the bulk of our, not the bulk, but half of our collections are down there. Mm -hmm. It's, you know, the restrooms are down there. It's um, it's not like we can close off the basement from. Okay, from well, use, we'll so. let's talk about sure. it. Sure. So okay. What are, you, what are you utilizing the upstairs for? Mainly offices, and we can't uh, historical collections. We can't use it for meetings because of the uh, floor. building inspector that has you know declared we can't use it for public meetings. We can't really use it for you know much of anything. So, so right now, there. Yeah. there is there is we, we got the all that stuff out <laughs> from there and put it up in the school. So mm -hmm. now that the size of the senior center project is changing, is the library going to get back some of the stuff that? were negotiating you know, like the garden space and some of the green spaces that are you hope I, I hope that you'll be talking with the senior committee about getting some of that stuff back now that there's more room to work with so that, we're definitely collectively both projects are hoping to gain more green space from that so i know that that is one of the goals um, but we have not even begun to sure, sort of sure. try to redesign our joint parking until we see some, the program yeah some of the gardens and things like that yeah even in the, so. the most recent joint <laughs> plan with a bigger building we had picked up what 10 10 feet on that last design and I don't remember how much the original children's garden area was was it like 15 feet and then we were just getting 10 back so I would think do you remember both like the original I think we originally had about 20 feet 20 so feet it was, yeah it was a fairly sizable meeting yeah. space around our building yeah right. but anyway yeah. so it I, I imagine we're going to collectively have a lot more Green space. I know that was one of the objections. Is too much asphalt. So yes, I'm. I'm certain that everybody will be a little happy with the, the joint parking plan. But we haven't started working on it. Yep. Okay. All right. Good. Project's good. All right. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Keep up the good work. All right. <laughs> with everything that's going on. <laughs> so we're going to town meeting warrant. Last thing on the agenda. So I think there's a couple of articles that we wanted to defer. Well, I'd like to remove article number uh, 17. 17 for yeah. the time being um, until possibly if we need to look at it. Um, you had gotten uh, a thing from Dr. Z. Did you get one? Yeah. yeah. I did have one. Okay, so um, just on the planning issue of, of uh, the process, but I don't think we need to go into that, but we did receive that, and thank you, Dr. Z, for uh, sharing that with us, and we'll follow that to the T, I guess. And um, so if someone would make a motion, any does anybody agree with me? Yeah, I'll make a motion to uh, rescind or strike Article 17 from the line. Okay. Yeah, and I'll second it. Okay, further discussion? Uh, yeah, just some points of clarification. Mm -hmm. um, just, you know, again, because it's a public meeting and things get said, so um, there was, you know, e even what um, 
Joseph Rodney found, going back to 1976, it, this does clearly say that the Board of Selectmen do have a right to initiate um, the zoning bylaw change. So again, you know, wouldn't want anybody to think that we weren't following um, protocol. And David, you did get it to them within that notice period. So David was very much trying to follow this outline. And then the other thing, too, is that there was some concern that it was done behind the scenes and um, just went back and, and you know, we, we discussed it August 1st, August 22nd, and then we had a, you know, several minute discussion about it on September 5th. So, um, you know, I know everybody doesn't watch the board meetings, like all the board meetings, God knows why would you want to, <laughs> but, um, and then there was also some conversation with um, Jim Maximov, Jim Maximoski and Bill Dwyer about it. <laughs> Too. So I, I think it was just a situation where not all of the planning board members were aware of the fact that we were having discussions on it because they you know, aren't necessarily glued to home watching our meetings, and I get that, but also just wanted to make sure that nobody in the, the public thinks that this was happening um, behind the scenes as a, any sort of trickery uh, that was quite above the board. So. Yeah, so what did you do that for? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, what did I do that for? Well, and uh, can I just say that this sure. is a, I hope it's seen as a goodwill gesture by the select board and yeah. that we're trying to come to a compromise with the planning board and, and get things done together at yeah. this point. And mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. um, if the voters want to see this at spring town meeting or any town meeting, then absolutely we can work on putting it back on. But for now, I think mm -hmm. one, one thing at a time. Yeah, yep. the, and the right way to do it is really to and that was the original discussion, so it was something typically the planning board themselves would put forward. You know, they're, they were the ones that raised it as recognizing it. It's and they issue. have to have a public hearing also on it, too. So. Right, so there was no way this was going to happen anyway, mm -hmm. which is what we talked about on the 5th. So. Okay. All, yeah. all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Is there another one that needed to come off for now? Number 11. Number 11. That's for the land. Lands. Oh, really? Right, so Alan, that's the, the housekeeper update? Is that yeah. so, oh, yeah, the CPA. We have the right. placeholder in there, right? Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. right so that we're not bringing right. forward, right. correct? Yeah. Right. We, we could, uh, Go ahead. Molly and I met with the Conservation Commission last week, and we met with uh, the community preservation people for that. And um, because the upshot is that there's really two things that has to ha have to happen that have not happened yet before they would consider you know, going forward, especially using town money or CPA money. And the two things are, there has to be some kind of a plan for how the property would be used and who would take care of it and how much it would cost, those kinds of things. Mm -hmm. And it uh, and has to be a, um, a firm price, uh, maybe an appraisal or something done. So um, I think the, That's why it's coming up right now. Right, so yeah, it's, just it's, not, it's, 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 it's not right. Hopefully it will be in the spring if the property hasn't been sold privately and we'll have a chance to do a little, um, do a little more legwork mm -hmm. and uh, have some more conversations and see how it goes. Also, oh, I should add, if the cash flow thing comes to pass, mm -hmm. you know, well, that's another option, but we'll have to, again, that's, that's not right either. So that has to, we have to see how that goes. Mm -hmm. So uh, having read everybody and thinking over it, the best thing is to table it. Yes. Al, Al, yes. you know, with the money that's involved with Kestrel and DCR, uh, if we were to take that plan on first order refusal, well, there no, is would no be no a first order refusal. There is not. No, no it's a change. Oh, okay. Yeah, be, uh, and that was a little bit of confusion uh, that we didn't really. Because we could use that money from. Yes, we could use that. Okay. Which would, uh, we thought that would be terrific. Yeah. Do that. Um, but yeah, on the right of first refusal, if he was taking it out of 61A, it's in 61A now, oh, okay. if he were going to develop it, I but there's no intention to do that. Yeah, right. Okay, so there wouldn't be any change in use. So we won't, we won't have right of first refusal if he sells it. So, right. so again, yeah. this, this proposal that they have really would, wouldn't help us in some of these situations anyway. You mean the cash flow? Yeah. Well, it sounds, it sounds like they were talking about possibly using something from this grant yeah, they could to make a purchase. Right. Okay, so I'm not sure yeah. of the details, um, but it's a possibility. Yeah. 
it was an offhand thought on the part of Kestrel when they heard about it. They said, oh, well, wait a minute, that's a really attractive parcel. So they, they definitely think that it should be included. Well, it could, it could be included in the this large grant thing. But that would, and the only you know, purpose would be to buy it because it's already restricted. Like I said, uh, I just the recreation part. I, I really got a really good problem with it. I, I hear you. Can't. I, I, I was born on Chamorro Road, and I've been on dirt bikes and four wheelers. No one has to be told that they can't do something on their own property. It's a reasonable position to take. Yeah. So can, can we ask Park and Rec maybe to kind of um, develop some sort of use plan but, for that property or some other department? I mean, yeah. I, well, I mean. You know, when you, when you do that and you make it town owned property and you got it on the waterfront, then you've got liability. Yeah. So, well, so there's, there's some it's things like that you have to really too. take a whole yes. look at it's the like picture. It's like the reservoirs too with the public safety exactly. aspect of it. I, mean, I guess our original thought was we'll get the property and then we'll figure out what to do with it. I think that hearing you know what people's concerns are, I think we have to flip that and come up with, even though we don't own it, just, you know, um, we could come up with some kind of a plan. Here's what would involve. Who's going to take care of it? How, mm -hmm. you know, what is the, like, we, you know, DBWS would be involved, Fox and Rec, Concom, citizens, abutters, yeah. you know, so we, I, I would police, like to see. Police, fire, yeah. Yeah, I'd like to see some effort to, um, and I'd be happy to, you know, participate in it, to have some conversations about what do people think about whether we should own it at all. Which I, to me is a no-brainer, but if we did own it, what are the pros and cons? What are the costs? We can figure that out before town meeting in the spring if it's still alive. Right? And, yeah. yeah, a couple of members of, of um, both the CPA and conservation, the, the, one of them even being an overlap between the two committees, were a visceral reaction to the town acquiring more land. Right. In, in, a, in a negative way. Mm -hmm. so, we already have enough land uh, that we don't know, that we're not managing. You know, I, I understand that. Uh, on the other hand, we're not talking about building a uh, Taj Mahal to use the word. That's been, that's been, and, and, and we, and, we, and uh, uh, I know that when we started to talk to people about similar things like the Hatfield boat ramp and the Sunderland boat ramp, people said, like, oh, no problem to take care of this. Is, it's not a headache. It's no big deal. Um, and I can see, like, fr our friends go mowing and picking out the trash and stuff like that. I don't, th to me, it doesn't seem like, but the question is a valid question. It's a valid concern. I think well, it has to be. I'm sure you're aware of, of the situation up at the Sunland Bolt Ramp with the DCR. Which, which one? Uh, they're trying to oh. tell the power bolts not to go in there now. Uh, I was just going to say, you see what I'm saying here? You see the recreation part is getting out of the DCR. Sure, yeah. you know, yeah. and uh, I see it all the time. Well, it's not just an app. Uh, yeah. yeah. I, don't, I don't see power bolts going into the into the same beach property yeah. either. No. Kayaks. Yeah. Kayaks yeah. Kayaks yeah. yeah. so uh, They want to do that non motorized thing at Sunland Boulevard. Yeah, well. So, you know, it's. It's a whole uh, issue for us. Well, that, that's, that's, that's why the town's owned Yeah. 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 Okay, opinion. so we're going to pull that in motion, please. Yeah. A motion to remove Article Number 11 from the town meeting warrant. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Thank you. All right. So there was debate about uh, Article 13, snow and ice sidewalk bylaw. Somebody had mentioned that we may want to defer that to the end of the yeah. day. Why? I was one of the ones that mentioned that. Um, if you, we can. I mean, we can put it out there and see what the voters want us to say about it. But it, I, I, I definitely think that we are overtaxing our DPW department with the new sidewalks that, that have just been put in down there by, and uh, expecting us to clear those on a 24/7 basis. Um, the only thing I wanted to see was. Uh, differentiating between commercial and residential, and residential. Mm -hmm. because uh, you know, you, nine year old people out there showing their snow versus you know, a hotel that has someone coming in and doing it already. Yeah. So I don't know how you guys want to approach it. But. I mean, I know it's, you know, one of those things that have been always 
been in the town of Hadley is that the, the DPW or the highway department is always taking care of the sidewalks um, in the center of town, Middle Street and West Street. Um, but now we have developed this state highway out in front here that uh, we didn't the state did. <laughs> <laughs> well, they the put state this, created they put this the sidewalks in there because they felt like they did I mean we didn't have sidewalks going yeah. down there by uh, Mr. and Mrs. Baranowski's house uh, right. in that area ever right. until after this highway was reconstructed so like I said it's, uh, I don't have a problem with the sidewalks down the road and the, you know even the bike know. lane even though we've got a bike path in town but yeah the problem I have is the telephones and poles in the middle of the sidewalks, the fire hydrants in the middle of the sidewalks. Go and take a ride down past the malls and see what the state I did to the sidewalks. I did. It, it's, That's why I don't think we should be responsible for them. I said that right along. Yes. Well, how, uh, what, what do you want to do? Nobody would ever put a sidewalk. What's what's that? Is house. that a business district down there? Can we say excluding that district? Is that I, I no, can't think you of want to exclude you want to exclude the residential. You want to exclude residential. And yeah, that's what I'm saying. Our, by, our, our bylaw that's wow. present is that people have to supposed to be taking care of their own sidewalks. Mm -hmm. And we, so asked, thing, really. we asked most of the people to clear their fire hydrants when we get a lot of snow, and most of the residents do, and most of the commercial property does, mm -hmm. because they've got a service maintaining their property. Yeah, I so think Marlo was going to try to get us some David. estimates before he leaves on Tuesday, right? So my sense is that we have a mosaic of uh, uses of uh, Long Route 9 and other streets. This would cover everywhere that has a, public, a sidewalk on a public way. And it may be that this is complicated enough that we need a little bit more time to study it and come up with a workable solution yeah. so you don't have... You going to go shovel those sidewalks to some winter? Uh, I have to shovel my own sidewalk. <laughs> see? See? Like, see? I mean, you know, you gotta find so does in Northampton, yes. And the high, yeah. fire hydrant in front of my house, too. See? And the drain. Yeah. I was hoping to get something done before this winter. Do you want to just uh, take off residential and keep uh, Maybe a business? Step, step in the right direction, at least. Can we do that? Yeah, so let me play with the language and we can bring it back up for a discussion on the third. Okay. Right. Uh, take Sounds off good. residential for now and we can look at that for the spring. Mm -hmm. all right. But yeah. right now we'll uh, want to keep it for residential. Uh, Commer commercial and industrial property should be maintained. Mm -hmm. By the yeah, we could just put the owner of any commercial or business real estate abutting that that that. Mm -hmm. He'll play with it. Yeah, yeah, I'll we'll play, play with, with it. The next it's, meeting. It's, 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 At least it might save a little bit of time and money. Just wondering that way. I I would hope so. Yeah. Okay. Is that it, folks? Uh, article number one. I oh. completed the budget this afternoon. Uh, obviously, we're not going to get into it tonight. I hope that everybody has. Copy of it, and I sent it electronically. going to pack us up, but that's okay. Go ahead. <laughs> well, obviously, we're going to take it under advisement. Um, <laughs> I, I certainly can. I do have an online, but I don't want to. It's right on it. I can't write on my phone. Sorry. All right, let's let's get through this then. <laughs> go ahead. Well, I'm not going to go through the entire budget. I'm just going to say that the budget is balanced. It's balance by taking into account the uh, uh, that we preserve our commitment to the service levels that we agreed to for the annual town meeting so there's no cutting of programs or, or scaling back of services mm -hmm. we uh, final state aid was reduced by 70,000 for chapter for not chapter for um, school choice assessment which was an unwelcome uh, hit to the town it was offset partially by our new growth, which increased by 40,000 from our annual town meeting estimates. And it may go up a little bit more than that. It includes all the collective bargaining agreements and their costs. It provides for a 2% no-step COLA for the non-union employees. Education, you remember that we said that we would provide them $57,000 at the fall town meeting. They've reduced their ask to 25000 so that number comes from them. What did uh, free cash work out to be? 
free cash can work out to be four hundred seventy-two thousand dollars and change, which is a little lighter than I had hoped, but it, it works. And you did tell all of that in an email this afternoon, and people didn't see it. Right? Yeah. Uh, at the annual town meeting, in order to afford the uh, ambulance service, we committed to using uh, stabilization funds for half of the OPEB co annual contribution. And uh, under this budget, I'm using 100% uh, of that contribution coming from stabilization fund. It's actually a better use of the money. I consulted with the treasurer before making that presentation to you. Uh, local receipts remain at annual town meeting levels with slight adjustments amounting to about $13,000 to meals tax and room occupancy tax, but uh, that, that's our engine for generating next year's free cash, so I didn't want to raise those. Uh, and obligatory expenses that became known after our annual town meeting was concluded, such as property insurance and workers' compensation, those have been accounted for. But some increases in there. A lot of little details, shaving uh, costs wherever I could, uh, came up with a balanced budget. Thank you very much. Sure. Nice to have a balanced budget. <laughs> I'm Do we have any room for capital? You have very little room for capital, so that is going to be one of the casualties yes. of this budget is that uh, the money that we had hoped to the vote to capital is not there in abundance, but there are some monies for capital. We put capital off the annual. That's one strategy. And the capital planning committee will be meeting on Monday and mm -hmm. coming up with the final recommendation. And is there anything that <coughs> is it going to be an emergency that on the capital that can't be deferred? Or? Uh, I don't have those notes off the top of my head. But yeah, um, I mean, there's. A bunch of stuff on there and sure people will rely on but I can't think of anything that's an emergency other than maybe the DPW and the well filters or something along those lines I don't know how much of an emergency that is but right. but you'll talk uh, about that Monday no, yeah we could we actually can pay for that's that out of water reserves okay that's out of water reserves so that yeah, doesn't so matter I okay we yeah. raised it yeah. last annual meeting yeah yep yeah. yeah. never mind that, well, that's we'll enterprise fund yeah we have them replaced so yeah. Okay. So in general, for capital, there's a couple of options. We can borrow more than we had anticipated uh, when we originally put together the annual town meeting budget, <coughs> or we can defer to the annual next annual town meeting the capital budget and recertify free cash in February because we know that we received a lot of payments after the July 1st deadline. So a lot of back taxes came in. A lot of uh, uh, pilot payments came in. Uh, we're talking about hundreds of thousands of dollars of revenue that uh, oh, yeah. came in after the deadline of July 1st. Uh, the last uh, monthly payment of state aid, for example, came in after July 1st, so we can't. Uh, there's additional money that may be available that we could we could scoop up for the annual. But we'll talk about that on yeah. Monday. Yeah, yeah, we'll Yeah. Okay. Anything else? Any news of the nation this week? Had enough news for the week? Yeah. I think so. I think so. Submitted the IT grant for $112,000 and change. Oh. So say we didn't do your report, uh, but, but, but that's, that's okay. Yeah. Is there any yeah. response from the <laughs> I don't have any questions. Has there been any response from the governor's office about the letter we sent them about the letters? Actually, the, we uh, we did get a response that they're uh, asking us to attend the meeting at the College of the Holy Cross, and I'll get that information out to you. Yeah, this would be with all the other municipalities. Yeah. It's yeah. not a private audience. <laughs> 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 oh, I, I, figured yeah. <laughs> I figured that. I figured that. Okay. Sure, if I can make that, I'd like to go to that. Okay. Sounds good. And any announcements? No announcements? Nothing tonight? Uh, again, Friday will be the Fire Association's Chicken Barbecue. Mm -hmm. And then the library is having a spelling bee fundraiser at Meteora on Thursday the 27th. I think that that's at 6 o'clock, but you know it might be 6 or 7. I think it's at 6, right? Yeah. yeah. 
and we'll have a sub fire station uh, public forum on September 27th at the public safety complex and, if you, and that's at 6 p.m. 6.30 if you'd like to uh, join us there to just see how those plans are going it's open to the public Thank you for your work this week, David. Appreciate it. Thank you. And motion? Motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Super. See you next Tuesday. Here. Here it is. Here it is. Oh, no. It's the Senior Center. Center. Yeah, the Senior Center. 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 Center.